past the hour it is the jeff santo show that you are tuned into we are here every monday through friday three to six eastern time 12 to 3 pacific and uh of course you can check us out on uh revolution radio network you can listen there you can also of course watch us on facebook live go to the uh, search bar at facebook live and put in jeff santo show and you can view us uh, in our um studio a here in the south coast um we're going to be hopefully chatting with our good friend uh, mark taylor canfield um in the next um couple of uh minutes hopefully and um maybe that is that is okay great all right now we we have it magically i said it and here it is um our next guest is uh the fantastic uh executive director of democracy watch news he's also uh, a great activist and a musician he's the renaissance man of the jeff santo show he is the great mtc <coughs> and he joins us from the great city of seattle wa hello mr mark taylor canfield <laughs> Gotta love it, hey. man. Hey, you know, we've been going my... a lot of uh, Sweet Home uh, Chicago, uh, so maybe we'll have to get yeah, you to, I'm to, the to play us out on that. You know, why not? I got my beautiful custom uh, Jackson here, so I'm loving it. And uh, it's a rock, Jeff. I hope you're doing well. It's a nice day I'm in Seattle, well. which means it's cloudy, uh, but it's nice to cool down. <laughs> well, I got a chance. To... Yeah, I got a chance to hang out uh, on Lake Washington in my kayak and go to the Magnuson pub, which is uh, right there at Magnuson Park, you know, named after our our former Senator Warren Magnuson. And it's, oh my gosh, right. it's some of the best beer in the world, Jeff. Like we have to go there when you come to Seattle, we'll go right yes, down to the water the and uh, we can go out on a couple kayaks and mess around on the water, have a few beers there. It's a really great um, brewery. And you, I don't think you can, you can buy their beer in any store. I think you, you literally have to go to that brew pub Oh, wow. And then I also got to way. go out on the Salish any. Sea. Yeah, I got to go out on the Salish Sea on, on my kayak on the Puget Sound. And that's because our friend Dane Garfield Wilson, uh, a DJ in, t in town and former owner of the Rebar, a club that raised a lot of money right, right. Uh, for Bernie Sanders yeah. and the Our Revolution folks back in the day. He put on a free DJ party down on the water on the waterfront in Seattle and people were out there hula hooping and playing frisbee and kayaking and swimming and it was great. So thanks a lot Dane and the Seattle Parks Department for putting that together. It was an amazing festival and since we're not going to have Hemp Fest this year, which is our normal huge, you know, 100,000 people show up, you know, to support cannabis and have bands like, you know, my band, the Galaxy Machine played the main stage there, Aon Jones, who's opening for the Rolling Stones played there. Uh, that's not happening this year. They couldn't get their th their act together because- Oh no, uh, Expedia they, permit wise down. or something? Expedia came here, put up their corporate headquarters, you know, along with every other major <laughs> corporation and took a lot of the land that was normally set aside for oh, that wow. festival. So they're still negotiating now. So that's where, that's my report from Seattle. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> All right, man. Anyway, well, we good were, show, we're behind you. Everybody. No, no. I mean, it's great stuff. Uh, we, I want to talk about what's happening uh, at Senator Patty Murray's office. Uh, yeah. you know, this climate issue is really, really big. We've been talking about it with all of our guests. You know, we've had on, of course, Larry, uh, Larry Cohen, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, chair in 16 and now at Our Revolution, the chair there. And, and then, of course, Harvey Kay, your, your friend and mine uh, from Wisconsin and a uh, great FDR author and so on. Economic Bill of Rights, 21st century version. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, um, Alan Grayson was just on talking about crypto yes. and all the, the, the money going into the, his Uber driver uh, rival who, you know, has no experience whatsoever and uh, is, you know, is in the race because he got a million dollars from some crypto guy. You know, I mean, it's just out of control. But, you know, that's where we are. But the environment and this fossil fuel legislation, the side deal, that uh, um, part of the squad, Rashida, Tla Rashida Tlaib, is really annoyed with uh, out of Michigan. And uh, I think she's got a lot of the, the folks at the Sunrise Movement and a lot of other environmentalists really angry. Uh, and they're they are not uh, backing down. They're protesting at, at Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's um, offices, as well as um, 
uh, Senator Patty Murray. And, you know, you're a senator from there in, in Washington state, you know, so-called woman in the tennis shoes or whatever it was, running shoes when she ran back in the 90s. Um, look, I think that, you know, all power to these folks, you know, that are out there protesting. And, you know, we need to, to make it clear that we're not just going to give away uh, American tax dollars to fossil fuel companies and, you know, let them pollute their way uh, to destroying uh, this country and this planet. So all the power to the to those who are protesting today. Mark? Yes. The soccer mom in tennis shoes is what they called Patty Murray when she became right. a U.S. senator. Right. Uh, she was uh, an, a more independent-minded candidate at that time. However, later she yes. did vote um, for the war in Iraq, which has always been held against her by some folks in the state. Um, yeah, the, there is this whole issue going on. Uh, there's also uh, 350, which is a, a big group on some of these right. issues. Uh, 350 Seattle yeah. is very active. Um, people have been involved like McKinnon that and group. other groups have been in the kayak activism here against the show oil drilling platform when they brought it to Seattle. Um, and so there's a long history of opposing uh, the expanded use of fossil fuel and, and hopefully, you know, you know, eliminating fossil fuel. Uh, Seattle is a very bicycle friendly town and, you know, electric scooter, electric bike, electric skateboard, or whatever you have. Uh, they try to uh, put a lot of lanes uh, through the city for that purpose to keep people from using so much fossil fuel. Well, here we go. Um, Joe Manchin once again stands in the way of some major change. And uh, I, you know, I don't know why he's always the person on our lips, uh, but I, I'm tired of it. He's you always, know, it's he's always like, there. Always there. Yeah. So whatever you want to say about it, the, the folks in Seattle, at least eight of them, decided to go to Patty Murray's office here in Seattle and do a peaceful sit-in. Um, uh, you know, note that I used the word peaceful, you know, it was very peaceful. Yes. Very um, much so. the, what I say at the end of my show. Point, yes. And, you know, it, it was there at Patty Murray's office, which is not far from where I live. You know, I'm, I'm in the studio now at a, at an undisclosed location, where, which is you know, <laughs> somewhere near the space needle, but I yes, definitely, yes, yes. yeah, I definitely wanted to cover this and I did get word from an activist who trusted me, you know, not, not to spill the beans ahead of time or something to go down there. So it's been um, another activist moment in Seattle. They have their own press uh, behind them and are pushing this narrative too, which I think is smart. Uh, they've learned that from, you know, the mainstream uh, conservative press. So they made a statement. They uh, were, they were chanting, you know, they, they definitely wanted to call attention to the compromise. And they don't think that it's uh, acceptable. Um, there's a lot, you know, they delivered a letter to Senator Murray's staff and they asked that Murray commit to opposing Manchin's proposal. And when they didn't get that commitment, eight uh, uh, activists with a, a group, which is also a hashtag um, on Twitter, people versus fossil fuels, um, right. eight activists from that coalition staged a peaceful sit-in and held a banner, and that banner said, Senator Murray, stop fossil fuels, no fast track deal for pipelines. So what it is, is this, this, this side deal that they've made with Manchin, you know, that's yep. really causing the problem, it has to do with the pipelines. So the police showed up um, and told them that they had to leave. They were given a, a you know, a trespass warning. Uh, they were asked to, to leave by the staff of Senator Murray's office. They refused to leave. And all eight of them were arrested. I'm happy to say that they are all currently released. Uh, how, however, they, you know, they are being charged um, for this act of civil disobedience. And a lot of activists and coalition members also rallied outside the federal building, the Jackson Federal Building, named after our former. Uh, Scoop Jackson. Uh, yeah, our former, our former congressman Henry Jackson. So. Uh, Dozens of activists, activists there were chanting um, and they were holding signs, reading things like no fast track deal for pipelines, uh, no permit deal for big oil and you know, don't sacrifice communities to big oil. So this is the message that these groups want to get out. 
And one of those official statements from this coalition said that, quote, the proposal from Senator Manchin is nothing more than a wish list from big oil, whose only goal is more profit at the expense of people and the planet. And that came from Thomas Meyer, who's the national organizing manager with a group called Food and Water Watch, which covered this today very well yes, and provided yes. us with a lot of good information. Well, we were talking to Larry Cohen. He mentioned Food and Water Watch uh, as well as, um, you know, the 350. Uh, dot org um and um on top of that uh um you know the uh, the folks at sunrise and these these groups these organizations uh and there are probably others too uh you know they are critical to the future man and we need to we need to uh, really you know harvest these folks and 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 make them rise even larger in every city in this country uh because we can't afford to have uh, fossil fuel companies uh, ruin and destroy this planet as they have been doing for a number of years now. Uh, talking with our good friend uh, Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santos Show. And you know, Mark, uh, we were talking uh, again with you know Larry Cohen, and I mentioned you because we've uh, we've talked about this many times. Larry actually lived in New Jersey. You know, he currently is he's from Philadelphia originally. He currently lives in in the D.C. metro area now, and chair of our revolution there in D.C. Uh, where they're kind of headquartered. Um, he was very close at one time to Bruce Springsteen. And he said, look, if you want to, you want to be, because we talked a lot about we will be the candidate in 24. If you want to choose somebody, I would, I would nominate Bruce Springsteen for president. And, you know, in 2024, he says, you probably won't do it, but that's my pick. He, he's perfect. He's ideal. I says, you know, I said, my good friend, Mark Taylor Canfield will be on later at 530 Eastern, 230 Pacific time. Uh, he and I have been talking a lot about Eddie Vedder. So if Springsteen doesn't want to do it, um, you know, I will raise my hand and nominate uh, Mr. Vedder because, you know, I think he has demonstrated on a lot of issues, including the issue of Ticketmaster and, and many others. And I, I would love to see him, you know, throw his hat in the ring. You know, Dave Grohl, too. But to me, there, there are musicians pointing to yourself as an activist, as somebody who's, who's a reporter, you know, being the music and sometimes feed the soul that we, we get with these empty vessels who happen to be in Congress. So I don't know what you thought about that, and, and I don't know if Vetter is interested, but to me, there are some folks that have demonstrated political awareness and the willingness to go out and fight for certain political issues. You know, Neil Young is kidding. I don't know if he's changed American since uh, he was born in Canada. Maybe he's got an American citizenship at this point. Who knows? But um, you know, I think it's important for these folks to get involved because, you know, if, if we end up with more and more people, you know, who, who represent uh, just Wall Street and we won't take on, you know, the, the Wall Street, won't take on the fossil fuel companies, won't take on the military industrial complex, you know, people are just not going to show up to vote. It's not that they're going to go vote for Trump or the right wing. They're just not going to show up. I mean, majority of people don't vote as it is. Your thoughts, Mark? Eddie Vedder, Dave Grohl, what do you think? Uh, I think that Eddie Vedder, if you've ever met him, you find that he's a very shy person when he's not on stage, which is hard to believe, but he's not the only artist or rock singer that I've met who's like that. That's true. Um, yeah. so he's very soft spoken. However, he is activist oriented and he did, uh, open, do some music for Ralph Nader when Ralph Nader was running for president, I believe on the green party. Yeah. Yeah. So he, you know, I, that's the first time I met him and I thought it was great. He got up there with his ukulele and sang a song about <laughs> Bill Gates and uh, about rich people and you know, soulless rich people or whatever. And, and, and I thought, wow, I have a song like that too. We, I, we should talk about that because that, that's a theme I think that you see with a lot of musicians. They're able to give you uh, some pretty uh, cutting social commentary. And this thing that you carry in your wallet uh, called an artistic license is really cool <laughs> and because um, it gives you cover in ways that a lot of times you don't have as a, either an activist or political person or even journalist. So uh, my artistic license is written on the back of a napkin and it says that basically Mark Taylor Canfield has the right to say and do just about anything in the name of art that as long as he doesn't harm himself and other people. So, you know, <laughs> right. I mean, and that's where the, where the back of a napkin. Is. Okay. What is harmful for Eddie Vedder, but when he got out on the global stage, 
uh, when they had those series of concerts, a lot of them were held in the Anaheim Stadium down there. And he got up on stage, first live show after the economic shutdown. Uh, he got up on the stage and the first thing he said was, if these pharmaceutical companies want to be the heroes, give it away for free, give it away for free, give all the vaccines away for free. So he was right there in front on that major issue. And I do remember Pearl Jam tweeting about that. Uh, they had a tour scheduled right when the pandemic hit and they were very critical of the government's uh, initial reaction and response because they could get no information about whether the tour was gonna be safe or not. So out of safety's sake, they canceled it, which turned out to be you know, obviously the right move. Now they're um, doing a world tour. Um, Dave Grohl, I think, you know, he has, he probably has more of the stomach for it. I mean, he just, he wrote a book. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, there, he, he um, definitely tour. does. He speaks out a lot. He's always um, going after Reverend Phelps <laughs> there in Kansas, <laughs> uh, yeah. the, the anti-gay congregation. And so, you know, singing BG songs to them from a flatbed truck or whatever. But I think, uh, there would be a, a wide acceptance for artists. You know, I has, I've hesitated in the past to talk like that because that's, you know, when you, if it's the entertainment industry, I mean, that's how we got Ronald Reagan, which started this whole mess. So right. I think we should be careful. Yeah, no, I mean, um, you know, from him to Trump, you know, there's a great circle there. Probably you know, don't they, they're very good at lying. The they're very good at, uh, at uh, BS. That gets them across the uh, finish line. Oh, I, I saw him on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bozo the Clown or uh, whatever he was. Uh, you know uh, what, Ronald Jeff? Reagan, you know, so. Let me ask you a question. Would you vote for George Clooney? Yes. I, think I mean, you know, he's would. swayed a, a little bit to, you know, to the, the world of big money Hollywood because he is part of big money. Um, but no, I, I, I definitely think that he is, you know, has the right tools. I mean, some of his movies that he's made, you know the what the great one in Edward R. Moreau, um, the respect there, and 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 a few other movies on the Middle East and foreign policy, you know, prove that you know he gets it. The question is, you know, who my favorite would be Go my ahead. my choice, my number one choice would be Denzel Washington. Oh yeah, well he is, he, uh, he demands so much respect. To, or and you know, can you imagine? Um, you know. Uh, we didn't land on uh, Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us as as one of the taglines. I mean, that would be that would be fabulous, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, are... these would be these would be great, great candidates. Okay. And and look, I mean, the artistic community, um, you know, really needs to kind of step into the political community because yeah, a I lot of these folks that. have become robotic. You know, they they, yeah. they say the same thing. You know. Well, we're pro-choice. We're pro-LGBTQ uh, rights. We're uh, we're for uh, economic, uh, you know, uh, equality. And you know, okay, but I would you say know, this give me sure. something. We need more pro. We need more pro-democracy statements from musicians for sure. Um, yes. You know, in Russia, you know, bands like Pussy Riot have no choice but to speak out. Um, I know that Mono and you too felt that way during you know. The, the, the so-called troubles in Ireland, right? Uh, which is basically part Study of the Bloody War. Sunday, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they felt compelled because they were moved. The same reason that I I wrote a song um, about the Seattle protest, Black Lives Matter protests, uh, called "Tear Gas in Seattle." You know, I mean, it's like "Tear Gas in Seattle." It's just another day. You know, it's just another day in Seattle for us to have major confrontations with a corrupt police department. And so we, I had to write about that. Um, and the same thing, I think, I think people like Bruce Springsteen and, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll ever see the guys in Kiss become political because they're all about glam yeah. and yeah, makeup. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you know, I've tried, yeah, I've tried making... to call out Gene Simmons a few times through Twitter and say, hey, what do you think about a benefit concert for the victims of gun violence, but you know, no response. He's, he's out on tour yeah, right now. I having a great I time. don't, I don't see him. I, I think Stanley probably is more progressive than he is anyways. Uh, Jim Simmons is more of a moneymaker and was always that way when, you know, the, the, the more folk singers of the, of the seventies were doing their thing. And, you know, he was out there, uh, you know, party all night, party all day kind of thing. If you remember that, I would that be afraid to have Gene Simmons as president of the United States. It would <laughs> yes. be a party all day and all night. <laughs> no, you know, when I, I ran sort of a joke, 
see for president, I said the first thing I would do would be build the largest sound system the world has ever seen at the White House. I think uh, Gene Simmons would probably do the same thing. But wouldn't that be great? My, my, my inaugural party would have bands and it would be Pearl Jam, of course, but also Alice Cooper, right? All right. And Wilson, Nancy Wilson from Heart. Um, uh, Kim Thale from Soundgarden, Shana Shepard, uh, the Black Tones with Eva and Cedric Walker. They would be playing that night. And I would invite uh, you two as well, of, of course. Oh, please. And we would all yeah, be sitting on the top two. of the White House listening to, well, you know, Freddie Mercury songs or something. You know, we oh, are sweet. the champions, my friend. Oh, yes. Maybe we finally get this country back from all these finally. corporate big waves. Just don't T- care taking it back. what's happening. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's re- I mean, in fact, if you remember that Live Aid um, video tribute, one of the things I don't know if they actually put this in the film, um, you know, uh, about uh, about Freddie Mercury and so forth. But, um, you know, in the live thing, he did the whole thing about Radio Gaga, you know, Radio Goo Goo, you know, the whole kind of things today. And as I was I was talking about earlier this today uh, on the Today Show, they had on, you know, um panic at the disco band which you know remind me a lot of you know 1950s 1970s sort of um you know typical you know bubblegum bands and you know uh i don't know i've i've never really have uh, known much about them but to me it is is so important uh to get um you know, musicians to take it seriously and to understand that they have a role to play in our society you know, to me, it's it's so, so vitally important to have that. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, that somebody, you know, whether it's it's Vetter or it's, you know, a Grohl or whomever, you know, takes takes the next step. Even if they they throw all their weight behind somebody, uh, you know, who is uh, who is a champion on the environment or a champion on uh, on health care issues and so forth. To me, this this has to be done. So I'm hoping. Well, if they want to bring, if you want to bring young people into your movement, then yep. other than Bernie Sanders, I don't know who else you can bring in. Um, of course, the uh, Ilhan Omar's and AOCs and Pramila Jayapal's, but you know, Shama wants. But how about some musicians? How about getting them involved in the political campaigns, and then you'll see kids showing up uh, to the campaign. Uh, speeches and parties because there's going to be great music i mean that's something that i used to do more often i haven't for a while but uh, my band actually played a fundraiser for congressman jim mcdermott and that was fun i mean it you know it was a mix of politics and music but he was such a laid-back easygoing friendly guy still is you know so i'm i'm i had a good time we all enjoyed it he enjoyed it He, he hung out and talked to the band for a while and then he remembered that. Like the next seconds, time I saw man, him, man. I saw him after that. He remembered that show. Um, but yeah, I think you know musicians should be out there involved in the community, and being involved in the community also means being political. And in the case of Seattle, we saw that with saving the Showbox Theater. Oh, by That's the way, right. hey uh, Mark, out at get a run news. Okay, check me out on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I love you guys. Take care, Jeff. Have a great weekend. Keep Peace, rocking. man. Hey, I uh, want to remind everybody, Sunday, Mark Taylor can't feel fantastic. Wish you could be here on Sunday, 1 o'clock. Cambridge, uh, Harvard Square, Bernie Sanders, Sarah Nelson, and uh, uh, Sean O'Brien of the uh, Teamsters. I'll be there. Hope you are, too. Until Monday, thank you, Freddie Santori and the gang in Boca. My name is Jeff Santos, and I got to go. Happy weekend. <laughs>